Welcome to the Mindful Minimalist Show. My name is Sarah. I want to preface this video with a disclosure that I am not a medical professional and you should not take this as medical advice, only for entertainment purposes. Talk with your doctor, psychiatrist, counselor, whoever it may be, and take their advice. Let's get started. I am a licensed educator, an expert declutter, and a mental health warrior fighting the stigma. This podcast covers minimalism, mental health, and mindful living. Today's podcast is all about mental health, specifically depression versus bipolar one versus bipolar two. At the end of this video, I give my main pieces of advice to those who think they may have one of these illnesses. Let's start off with the question, what is depression? I believe most people automatically get this idea in their head when they think of someone with depression. I think most people Picture maybe a teenage goth kid who wears black all the time, who wears dark black eyeliner, sits there and sulks and doesn't talk to people. That, quite frankly, is not depression. Other people may say that it's someone who stays home all the time, doesn't socialize, doesn't want to talk to people. Um, that may be the idea that you get when you think of depression or someone who just cries all the time or, you know, people may even think that they're lazy, that they don't want to do things, they don't want to work, they don't want to get out. I will tell you, that is not depression. Now, that's not to say that people like that do not have depression or could not have depression because anyone could have depression. So depression, to me, is being in a state with zero desire to do anything. Even things that I was once so passionate about, I couldn't care less about them when I'm in depression. Depression makes you feel like it's going to be dark and bad forever. It never goes away. That's what it feels like when you're in it. It is the darkest place I've been in depression consumes your life it's something that you cannot control it's something you cannot pray away i am a christian and i do believe in healing but i believe that god is the one that heals not the person praying for healing this is completely for another podcast but i have had a lot of judgment from christians family and friends um, because of my bipolar because of me going through depression and seeming to not get better. So depression is different than bipolar. And I want to explain the differences between those because most people have heard of depression. They have an idea of what that looks like. And now I've shared with you a little bit of what depression is like for me. Depression is a condition that can go away. It can be chronic and be long-term or it can be chronic and you have it forever. It can be genetic, it can be triggered by certain events, and it can just happen for no reason. Depression often hits people maybe who have lost loved ones, who are dealing with a big life change, or someone who just has hormones that are off balance, or someone who is struggling with chemicals in their brain, not producing what they need to be producing. It doesn't have to be from an external event. And I think many people confuse that and think, well, why are you in depression? What happened? You have such a good life. I mean, look at your family. You have a good job. You, you shouldn't be depressed. But it's not something that you feel or you choose just because bad events are happening in your life or because you just want the pity. It is something that happens to you whether you want it to or not. It is something that you cannot control. I want to stop and pause and say I apologize if you hear my son acting like a dinosaur in the background of this podcast. I could try to find a fancy app to edit that out and delete it, but I want to keep this podcast real. This is real mom life. This is authentic. You're getting the real me. You're not getting anything fake. Now, I want us to go ahead and jump into what is bipolar disorder. This is the trickier subject because not as many people have heard about this or know about it like they do depression. So let's stop and think about the stereotype of someone with bipolar. I want to pause and give you a second to think. 
when you hear of someone having bipolar disorder, especially for those of you who don't know me, who haven't been following my story, who don't know many people with bipolar disorder, what's the first thing you think of when you think of the word bipolar? So what bipolar actually is, is a form of depression, but it shifts into a form of mania. Bipolar disorder can be looked at like a roller coaster or a mountain. Think about a roller coaster. It goes up, which is the mania. It goes down, which is the depression. Now, bipolar disorder is genetic and it can also be triggered out of nowhere. For me, I believe that it was also genetic, and this is again another podcast I want to make another day, but I do have a history of mental illness in my family with several different family members. So whenever a certain event happened to me, it triggered my bipolar disorder and it triggered PTSD. And those are things that I'm living with now three years later. Bipolar is different from depression in the fact that you do sometimes go up high. You do have those wonderful days where life is perfect, life is wonderful, you feel like you're back to your normal self. But then you have those days when you go down, so far down, it feels like you're never going to get back up. It feels like you're going to be stuck there forever. It feels hopeless. Life feels meaningless. And you have no pleasure in life whatsoever. You wake up and you wait to go to sleep. You just want to sleep the day away to make it pass. But then with mania, apart from stability, just being happy, having a good day, mania is taking it to the other extreme, taking it so high. And this is where we're going to get into the difference between bipolar 1 and bipolar 2. But a quick summary of what mania would be is an elevated state of mood. And it is beyond normal person's happiness, a good day, feeling excited, whatever, feeling energetic. With bipolar 1, you have extreme mania. With bipolar 2, you have a lesser mania. Let me start with what mania is. A summary of mania would basically be an elevated state of mood and you feel invincible. You can do anything. You may be feeling more creative, more spontaneous. You also may go on spending sprees and spend thousands of dollars. You may make really important life decisions and make poor decisions. Those are some of the most frequent symptoms of mania. Now let's talk about the difference between bipolar 1 and bipolar 2. Bipolar 1 basically has stronger mania symptoms, and that's literally the only difference. If you look in the DSM-5, which is the Diagnostic Statistic Manual, I believe I said that correctly. Um, Someone medical correct me in the comments or go Google it. They may have some slight differences in regards to how many episodes you need to have to be considered bipolar 1 or bipolar 2, but for the most part, the main difference is bipolar 1 has a more severe mania. So for someone with bipolar 2, mania may look like rapid speech. I know whenever I'm manic, I feel like I need to talk like this all the time because there's just so many ideas and so many things that i got to get out. If you know someone with bipolar disorder and they're talking like that, and that's not quite their normal pace, they probably are in a manic episode. Again, I want to point out Kanye West. I did a video about him and I'll link that above and below in the description for you. And that video was all about his manic episode, him running for president. That is more of an example of bipolar one. I'm not sure which one he's diagnosed with, but I I really think that it would be one. Bipolar one also gives you grandiosity. You feel like you can do anything. Many people who experience this feel like they are God or feel like God is sending them messages and they are supposed to tell the world and save the world. Or on the opposite side, they may have thoughts and things that involve demons or, you know, just crazy things that they don't want to think about. 
Now let's talk about what my official diagnosis is, and then I wanna share a little bit with you about my history and how I got to where I am today, how I got my diagnosis, and how I'm doing in life currently. I haven't really given you guys an update on my mental health in a while. Things have been busy, we recently bought a new house, quarantine's been happening, so life's a bit all over the place. But let's go ahead and do our update today. My official diagnosis is bipolar one. For me, this diagnosis took a long time. It took a long time to get to where we are today. So the short version is the incident that I previously mentioned that triggered my bipolar disorder and triggered PTSD in me, that changed my life. I am one day going to cover a podcast about this. However, I think internally, I don't want to. I think subconsciously, I don't want to let myself go there. I don't want to take myself back to that moment and back to those feelings of fear, those feelings of um, guilt, and I don't know. I know I'll eventually make a podcast for you guys over this because it's such an important part of my story, but enough rambling. That event was first treated as postpartum depression. And I saw my gynecologist who treated me for postpartum depression and anxiety, started medication, just wasn't getting better. I would notice though, I would feel really good for a while. And I was like, okay, sweet. I think the depression is over. That's great. So I would stop taking my medicine and then I would crash right back down. Then even if I stayed on my medicine, I would feel better for a little bit. And I was like, sweet, I don't know, maybe the medicine's working and I'm doing better, that's great. And then I would crash right back down. And so I was just frustrated thinking, why am I going up and down? Why do I sometimes feel good? Why do I sometimes feel like I'm in depression? Like what's happening? And that led me to my research, that led me to YouTube, probably like your specific health issues are leading you here, or a family or friend having these issues had led you here. For me, I started researching depression, postpartum depression. I started looking into bipolar randomly. I saw some videos on it and I thought, hmm, I mean, I don't think I have bipolar, but I'm gonna go look at this and see what it's about, you know, just interesting. The more and more that I researched it and that I read about it, the more convinced I was that that's what I had. And remember, this whole time, I was still just being treated for depression, for postpartum depression, and it had been about a year and a half of treatment. And I just thought, this can't continue. Like, this is just not normal. This is not depression, especially because sometimes I feel really good. So I finally brought up all of my symptoms and the research I had done to my doctor over bipolar disorder, which at this point, he was just a general physician and he did start me on some medication for bipolar disorder. I continued to not improve and so I started seeing a psychiatrist. Now I have seen many psychiatrists in the last few years. I'm currently with my favorite one. She is my first female psychiatrist and I see a huge difference between her and the male psychiatrist that I had. I feel like she is a little more sympathetic and she listens better. So after seeing the psychiatrist, I have been given the diagnosis of bipolar again. I think it's been three times that I've had the diagnosis officially given to me. And I've been diagnosed with bipolar one every time. This is something that confuses me to this day because I honestly feel like I have bipolar too. I don't feel like my symptoms of mania are that extreme to be classified as bipolar one, but apparently my doctors do. So my diagnosis is bipolar one and I am learning to live with it. I still have not found the right medication. I still deal with depression and mania and I go up and down whenever my brain decides to. So I'm definitely doing better on medication than I would have been without medication. But I want people to know that it's not a cure-all. It doesn't, just because I'm taking meds and I'm seeing a counselor and therapist and all of that stuff, doesn't mean that it goes away. And doesn't mean that since I'm taking these pills every day, I'm gonna just feel magically better. Does not work that way. I do not feel better. I've simply learned how to deal with it better. I also just accept the fact that I am going to go through moments of depression and I'm going to go through moments of mania. 
For me, I typically stay in each cycle for a few months. So I have been in a manic episode for a couple of weeks now before I was in a mixed episode, which is having the depression and the mania at the same time, which if you're interested in a mixed episode, leave me a comment down below just saying mixed episode or ME for abbreviations, because I think that would be a really great podcast for people to learn that you're not just in depression, you're not just in mania. You can have both at the same time. Now you have stuck with me to the end of the video and it's time for me to give you some advice. Before we do the advice, be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell so you'll get an update every time I upload a new video. Here's my advice. Number one, see a psychiatrist. Do not be ashamed to admit you need help. Do not be ashamed to take medication for this. If you would take medication, if you were diabetic, if you would take insulin, take your psych meds. If you were having heart failure, would you take your heart medicine? take your psych meds. It's the same, same, same concept. Health is health. Mental health is physical health. It's all connected. It's all health. My next tip would be see a therapist. Psychiatrists and therapists are extremely different, and that's another topic I plan on covering in the future. Can you guys tell I just have tons of ideas and I just can't wait to get them all out? I have so many things I want to share with you, so I know this podcast will be helpful for that. So seeing a therapist will be more of the current emotional state that you're in. There are different types of therapy like talk therapy, EMDR, um, cognitive behavioral therapy, and I've tried all of those. And I love them. I love seeing my therapist because she helps me learn how to get through each day. She helps me learn how to cope with the situations that life throws at me and how to talk better with my psychiatrist about my needs as well. My final piece of advice for you is to not be ashamed of your mental illness and to not keep it just to yourself. It's so helpful when you open up and you talk with people and you know that you're not alone. So I really encourage you to find a friend, a family member. Don't be afraid to find someone online either, someone that you can talk with, someone that can understand you and your struggles. I want to remind you guys that I am always available. You are free to drop a comment down below and I will always respond. And you can also find me on Instagram at underscore the mindful minimalist underscore. You can also find me on Facebook at the mindful minimalist. Feel free to message me on any one of those platforms and I will definitely get back with you. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, I am not a licensed medical professional. I have no experience doing this as a job, as a career, but I do have the experience of living this every day for the last three years. Living with depression and bipolar is so much more difficult than people can even understand. To say that it has changed my life would be an understatement. It has changed every single aspect of my life. It has made it more difficult by far. It has really pushed me to find strength that I didn't know I had. It has pushed me to dark places that I never thought I would have to go. I never thought I would experience depression. If you know me in real life or you follow me on social media, you know I am like the most outgoing, the most just in your face, talkative, wanna hug you kind of person. I'm so intense, I'm very extra. So for me to feel that way and for me to go through depression was so confusing to me and it was confusing for my friends and family at first too and still is for some of them who have not really been open to educating themselves on the topic. However, many of my friends and family members have really stepped up and educated themselves and helped me out. Um, in particular, my mom. She has done a wonderful job of learning more about the disorder as well as my anxiety disorder and helping me out as I need. So shout out, mom. Love you. These people didn't understand why I could be in depression or how I could be in depression. Like I said earlier, you know, people think, wow, she has the perfect job. I had the career that I wanted. I was a teacher. She has a husband. We had been married for I don't know how many years. Let's not do math. We had been married for a while. We had a son. I had this wonderful, perfect baby. We owned our own house. Life was great. Everything was perfect. I was so happy. So what happened? 
why did I fall into that depression? Why did I develop bipolar disorder? Those are great questions. And the answer is, it can happen to anyone. It could happen to you. It probably has already happened to one of your friends or to one of your family members. We just don't talk about it. So like my last piece of advice, don't be afraid to speak up. Don't be afraid to tell people about what you're going through. And mostly, don't be afraid to seek help. I hope this podcast was helpful for you. And I hope that you will be here for our next episode. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you.